So Alexei Navalny, the main Putin's critic, died in the Russian jail. And today I want to comment on that, tell you why I was not a fan of Navalny in the beginning and what he meant to Russian people and what his death means now. Navalny has been the main leader of the Russian opposition for the past 10 years. And honestly, I learned about this only about four years ago because I was too young when he only started. So in 2011, he was in the protests on Balotnaya. In 2013, he was running for the mayor of Moscow and got the second place there. In 2018, he was trying to run for president, organized a big presidential campaign, not only in the capital, but in remote regions. But he was not allowed uh, to participate in the elections even and in 2020 he was poisoned and in 2021 he returns to Russia and is jailed for some fabricated criminal cases and the last three years he spent in the Russian jails and there he also was tortured they put him into Shezo it is a special prison cell with very hard conditions where your bed is uh, tied to the wall during the daytime so that you cannot even lay down and here is how it looked and now I want to tell you how I learned about Navalny and why I didn't like him at the first time the thing is that I first learned about him from the Russian state media and of course they fabricated news about him saying that he is a corruptionist and that first impression sticked with me so that I didn't even know that Navalny is a politician they mostly mentioned him as a scammer or as a blogger in a derogatory meaning so that made me to think that he is a shady person and anyway I was about 16 I didn't understand much about politics and also I think it's due to the fact that I lived in the far east of Russia in a small remote town where people have less motivation, less hope than people in the bigger cities. So I didn't even know what was happening in Moscow and big cities of Russia at that time. I didn't know that Navalny had so many supporters and that he in fact opened his offices in big cities of Russia, even in Khabarovsk, where I later studied. But with every year the situation was becoming tougher and people who worked in such offices were were persecuted and so there were criminal cases opened upon them and so they were beaten and all that stuff. But even back then I met people who supported Navalny. For example, in 2017 I went to a camp in Vladivostok. I met there a girl who got a high score in the history olympiad and uh, she supported Navalny she told me a lot about his activity and also she told me that her dad supported Navalny so it was an example of an adult person who supports Navalny because there was another rumor spread by Kremlin propaganda that Navalny is supported only by children and by teenagers but of course it's not true because mostly it's adults who are interested in politics and who attended the protests and his demonstrations always were peaceful on another session in that camp i also met a girl uh, who i believe also went there by the history contest and she told me that she even volunteered for the navalny's office in her city and uh, for me it was also some piece of information like I didn't get that when I lived in Spask but I still was skeptical about Navalny because I didn't believe that he was a true opposition leader because there was a myth spread by Kremlin pretty successfully that Navalny was just an agent of Kremlin they just let him to do his activities to some extent so that people just vent their frustrations so I have this thought if they still didn't kill him it means that he is just a pawn of Kremlin. But then in 2020, Navalny was poisoned and finally I understood. I even made a video back then and told the whole story. It was hilarious. The investigation that Navalny did himself and when he called to his murderers and that blue underpants it is something. And after recovering in Germany, Navalny returned to Russia and it was shocking to everyone because it was so brave. And I thought that now they would 
kill him for sure and that's what they did. He was immediately arrested and uh, during this time, even when the war in Ukraine started, Navalny still spoke from the prison. He constantly sued the prison and uh, he used the court as a platform to speak and even there was a news when Navalny created a trade union in the prison because there Navalny and other prisoners worked as sawyers and he demanded to give them chairs with backs instead of stools so that people can work with more comfort. And after that news I respected him even more because it showed how unbreakable he is. Back then in April of 2021 there were big protests for Navalny and I also attended one in Khabarovsk. There were a lot of riot police to intimidate people as usual. And that protest happened after months we were trying to go out for Furgal. And with every month there were fewer and fewer people. Police was beating people at the protest. So we were very demoralized. And so I remember how much hope and light and warmness I felt when I went to that protest for Navalny in April. I saw that there are like-minded people around me and what was the most outrageous is that the city government played a speech of Putin on the big screen. It was Orwellian. And although I said that I was not influenced by Navalny when I was a teenager because I didn't understand much about politics anyway, now I look back and I see that in fact uh, Navalny played a big role in uh, my growing, in how I was looking around and understanding what is going on. And the simple thought that I can protest and that it is normal to protest, it is healthy in a normal country, that idea I got from Navalny and not only me, but millions of other Russians. Because the goal of our authoritarian regime was to make people apolitical and Navalny was fighting with that. He instilled this doubt in the minds of our people and he taught us that we should question the government when we don't like something. And he possessed such a unique combination of qualities such as charisma, braveness and wit. And he was so unbreakable. They put him to jail for so many times, beat him at the protest. They splashed this uh, zelenka on him. He survived the poisoning and return to Russia facing all his enemies. And also Navalny was a breath of fresh air for people because we at least saw his family and he looked like a human in comparison with Putin who hides his daughters and mistresses. And Putin never even pronounced the name of Navalny. When he was asked by journalists he always referred to him as this person who you mentioned or this character or this Berlin patient. So Putin was afraid of Navalny, he was scared even to pronounce his name and now he is scared by flowers that people bring to the spontaneous memorials in different Russian cities and usually they do that near the monuments to the victims of political repressions or at some other significant places and there they are being detained, arrested and beaten by the police. Navalny is dead but Putin is still afraid of him. Putin is afraid of girls with flowers even. And everybody knows that it is a political murder and Putin is personally responsible for this and it shows that he just went completely nuts. He doesn't care what the West will say. And it is so disgusting how now they are not even given the body of Navalny to his mother. So she went to that prison in the north of Russia, but the morgue just closed the door in front of her. Alexei's mother even recorded an appeal to Putin demanding that the body is given to her. According to the law, they should have given up the body already, but the investigator threatened her, saying that they would give her the body only if she buried it quietly. And the investigator told her that if she refuses to do that, quote, Time is not on your side, the corpse is decomposing. And many famous Russian journalists, actors, musicians recorded a video demanding from Putin that the body be given to the mother. 
I can't believe that this is happening in today's Russia. Update for the 24th of February. After one week, the body was finally given to the mother, but we don't know if they will allow her to hold a public farewell ceremony. Because they're afraid that there will be a demonstration growing after his funeral, the same way as it was with Boris Nemtsov. So they don't want to make it happen before the presidential elections that will happen in March. And now I want to talk about Navalny's racism and how nationalistic he was. More than 10 years ago, Navalny participated in the Ruski March. So yes, he was saying racist things, he was anti-immigrant in his early career, and he also insulted Georgians during the 2008 war. He said that Crimea is not a sandwich, when he was asked would he return Crimea to Ukraine if he was a president. Yes, he did and said all that, but many years after he addressed that and apologized. He was not a perfect opposition leader, but like what can you expect in such a regime? Many of us Navalny supporters disagreed with some of his views, but we thought that maybe he would not become a president, but at least he is effectively undermining the Putin's regime. And that's what we have to do now. And after that, we will have the time for debates and fair elections. Because if he became a president, there would be a system of checks and balances so that the president of Russia would not have so much power as now Putin does. Like Putin controls all his oligarchs, all the money. He assigns governors to all Russian regions. But in the future Russia, it will not be like this. And there will be democracy and a healthy discussion. And this is Russia that Navalny and all of us were fighting for. He even created this phrase, Прекрасная Россия будущего, the beautiful Russia of the future. He gave us this idea, the image of the future Russia, that the current Russian government cannot give us. Like now they are trying to feed us the idea of the reincarnated Soviet Union, but also with the imperialism and monarchism and the Orthodox Christianity. But people don't buy this, like we don't believe this. And the future and democratic and free and prosperous Russia that has good relationships with the world, this is what we believed in. Because I don't know what to do. Because Biden said in 2021 that there will be repercussions if Navalny dies in jail. So what? Now the West cannot do any more sanctions. I don't see how they can influence Russia the only way is probably to support Ukraine, to continue the support for Ukraine. But really, Putin feels like he is completely off the rails. Putin now is a bully who is blackmailing his victims and says that what you can do against me, you cannot do anything. And we Russian people are hostages in the country captured by the terrorists who continue to kill people in Ukraine and to threaten the West. And in March there will be presidential elections where of course Putin will win. And the thing is that most people don't even support Putin and don't support the war, as recent sociological investigations show. And as you can see, just by how many people stood in the line to sign the paper for Boris Nadezhdin, for him to be a candidate. And by the way, as I guessed before, Boris Nadezhdin was not allowed to participate. Or how many people gathered around Ekaterina Donsova, who also wanted to run for the office as an anti-war candidate, but who also was not allowed. But unfortunately, there is so much despair in the minds of people and I saw how many people were shocked and demoralized by Navalny's murder. And honestly, I even feel that I didn't feel enough grief and sadness. Probably, as sad as it sounds, I just lost hope long ago. The only hope I have now is Yulia Navalny, because as you probably saw, she announced that she will continue work of of her husband and this is a pretty powerful message and she also falls into the archetype of the princess Olga who according to the legend killed the enemies 
who murdered her husband. And I think it's great that the President of the United States met with Alexei's wife and daughter. It was important to see this support. And I want Putin to understand that the West despises him and will not recognize his legitimacy after these fake elections in March. And honestly, I'm so tired of repeating myself in my every video and I even feel that my content is not interesting anymore because what is new here? We all know that Putin is a bad guy, the war bad, Russia bad, I despise the Russian government and everyone who supports this. I share this in my video, you support me, you comment, you put likes to my videos and nothing happens. Like, I want to make some impact. I want to influence the minds of people who, you know, are sitting on the fence, but everybody is uh, in their eco chambers. So if you watch my video, you already support me probably. And I don't know how to break this wall. And I don't even know, should I continue to make these videos about the politics of Russia? So here's my question to you. Um, do you think that I can achieve something by these videos and are these videos interesting? Because I feel that I do the work of CNN, like you can get the same information and the same facts from your media outlets, but maybe what I bring is my Russian perspective, my emotions, my maybe insights. I don't know. I just want to believe that I am doing something useful and I'm helping the situation somehow. So after this quite a desperate rant, I still want to say that I have hope. I now even more mobilized. I have more energy. I want to continue to make my videos. I want to take care of my health, like to be stronger physically and to uh, continue learning languages, like to become smarter and smarter because I will be needed in the future of Russia. I will be needed like uh, in, maybe not in Russia, maybe in other country, but yeah, I want to preserve myself and just uh, take care of myself. What I realized I, uh, when I was analyzing why I don't feel so much sadness, is something wrong with me. But I realized that uh, for me, I have another feeling. I have anger. I'm angry at that country and at the regime that now is making children to sing shaman song in school. The regime that kills people. I'm so angry. And this anger is what encourages me now because Putin made this murder to scare people even more, but I will not be scared. I just refuse to give up. And as a representative of the young, progressive, beautiful, soy latte, queer Russian youth, I want to share my perspective, to support uh, foreigners and Russians like myself. There are some Russians who watch me. I want to do something useful in this situation. And I want to end this video with a quote that I saw on a poster at the demonstration for Navalny. Alexei Navalny is dead, but he will live in our hearts and see the beautiful Russia of the future through our eyes. And also I'm posting this video on the two years date after the war in Ukraine started. So I want to wish victory to Ukraine and freedom to Russia. Thank you everyone for watching me and supporting. Subscribe to my channel, tap like and goodbye. Don't give up. Пока -пока.